Good morning. I want to welcome you to Christ United Methodist Church. As we begin, let us open in prayer. Most holy God, we give you thanks for this day and the opportunity to gather together to worship you. And so, Lord, as we come together to worship, silence our hearts and our minds this day of all the things in this world that cause us worry or distraction. Lord, may we seek you in this time of worship, and may our worship be fitting and glorifying unto you. For it is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Christ United Methodist Church. Uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, let me invite you to fill out one of our uh, guest cards. These are the ones with the blue rim around it. They are located in your pew back pockets. If you have a prayer request that you'd like to lift up this morning, let me invite you to do so. You can fill out a prayer concern card. These are the ones with the red rim around it. And you can place any of these cards in the offering plate as it comes by later in the service. Um, if that prayer concern is just between you and me, let me invite you to hold on to it. You can hand it to me in the receiving line following our worship this morning. At this time, I want to invite uh, Nancy Kirkpatrick uh, to lead us in our call to worship. Be still. Remember who you are. Come touch the water of your birth. Be dead to sin, alive to God. Remember who you are in Jesus. We are beloved. We are heirs. We are children of God. We are claimed. We are marked. We are named by God alone. We are chosen and blessed. We are gifted, gifted to, to love, love, to witness, witness through word, word and, and deed. deed. At this time, uh, let us join together in our first song of worship, which is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Words are on the monitors. Let us stand and sing at this time. Hear this invitation. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sins. Please join me, with me in this prayer. Presence, Presence life, fire, fire God, God who is three in one, one, 
we, we confess, confess that, that we have turned away, away from, from you. you. We, we gaze, gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. worship. We, we take, take your creation into our hands, hands not to love, but to use and then, and then discard. discard. We, we go, go to, to the people of the land, of the land not, not to serve, but to press them into our service. service. We do we not do deserve that, that you would even notice us, us but we, we pray, pray for mercy, mercy because, because you are merciful. You are merciful. Flame, Flame of love, of love purify, purify us from sin. sin. Eternal, Eternal now, lead us into your truth. truth. Risen one, baptize us into union with you. you. Transform, Transform us into faithful, faithful disciples who worship you alone, alone. God, God who is Trinity. Trinity. Amen. Hear this declaration. Sisters and brothers, God offers forgiveness of our sins and the grace of repentance. Accept God's grace, repent of your sin, and be restored to abundant life. Amen. For all that you have given us, we thank you, gracious God, for day and night, evening and morning, for land and sea, for fish and birds, plants and animals, for humankind, and for your Son who came among us with the gift of life abundant. Let your Holy Spirit abide in our midst and work through our gifts that all people may have joy and peace. In Jesus' name, amen.
as we come to our time of prayer today, we want to first, sell, uh, first share a celebration. Uh, and this comes from the missions team. And it comes with a thank you for all who helped to make the stuff or bake sale a success. Uh, to all who have made pies, baked uh, delicious goodies for the bake sale. Uh, and so far that bake sale total is $704.05. And I believe, is there still some more stuff to, there's still more stuff to buy, so be sure to catch Ann after our worship today. Um, for all those who donated stuff to the stuff sale, um, sorted stuff, priced stuff, and helped on Friday and Saturday, uh, the, stuff, the stuff sale total uh, raised so, uh, is $1,311.32. And... Uh, a thank you to all who donated jewelry, sorted and priced jewelry, and worked the jewelry table on Friday and Saturday, and their total is $742. So we give thanks for that. A few of um, a few of our um, prayer concerns this morning. Um, be in prayer for Barbara Detweiler. This past week, she was in the hospital. Uh, thinking she might be having a heart attack, and uh, turned out to be some really bad acid reflux. Um, that acid reflux can be no joke, so, um, so glad that you're okay and back with us this morning in worship. Um, uh, be in prayer for Roland as he recovers from his back surgery. Um, be in prayer for Ed Dresner. Um, as we talked about last week, Ed was diagnosed with kidney cancer. Um, and he went to see his, uh, his specialist for that, um, which will possibly have involved removing that kidney. But before he does that, he'll have to go to the cardiologist and have an appointment with them. And so be in prayer for Ed as he goes through these appointments. Uh, this cardiologist appointment is this Wednesday, correct? And so we'll be praying for, for Ed in that. Um, and then also, uh, this morning we had been prepared for a baptism, and the baptism isn't going to happen this morning because uh, Harold, uh, the little boy, Susan Ideas' grandson that we were going to baptize this morning, um, he's sick with a stomach bug, as is his mom and his dad. And so Susan is there uh, helping take care of them this morning. So please be in prayer for uh, that entire family. Uh, this morning as they are dealing with whatever stomach bug that is. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, you are more than we can know. You are more than we can name. And yet we call on you again and again, for you alone are God. Lord, we cannot live apart from you, for you have called us into your triune life. Your steadfast love, it surrounds us all of our days, whether we may be on a high mountain or in a path in a, shallow, in a shadowed valley, at a crossroads on our journey. Or outside the gates of welcome or in some inner circle Lord you call to us delighting in the human race Lord we come before you with thanksgiving for all the gifts that you have given that delight us so for the beauty of the season for the lives of those who bless us beyond their knowing for this community of faith by which we are nurtured and challenged, for opportunities to serve you by serving others, for goals accomplished, and for the gift of life granted again today. Lord, we come before you humbly and hopeful in need. For those we know who are suffering it today because of illness, in mind and body or in spirit, for those who are trying to make a difficult decision, 
for those grieving a loss, an ending, or a dream deferred. Lord, we pray for healing and strength in every broken place of our lives. Lord, we long for the hope that you alone can give, a hope that does not disappoint us, but a hope that rolls away the stones of death and despair. Lord, we pray for those whose livelihood is precarious, for those who live at the edge of poverty's precipice, for those who live in temporary shelter and tenuous provision. Help us, O Lord, find the will and the way towards a common good. Lord, we come before you earnestly and urgently for this world in turmoil. Be it by war, man-made disaster, drought, flood, earthquake, tornado. Lord, we pray your healing upon our earth. Lord, come close to those who are starving or left in destruction's debris and allow them to be restored. Holy God, we have done so much in our world to disrupt, to disengage, and to even destroy what you have created and called good. Still, O oh Lord, you are determined to, light, to delight in us, the human race. And in that, O oh Lord, make us delightful. Help us, O oh Lord, to delight in you by living and playing in ways that please you. Help us, O oh Lord, to delight in neighbors near and far. Lord, make us delight in all our days until we greet with joy the kingdom that you are bringing. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. scripture reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 12 verses 9 through 19. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. 
Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. For the gift of scripture, we give thanks. Thanks be to God. If you'll join me in prayer. Spirit of God, may your word be as rain falling from heaven, soaking dry soil until it sprouts and springs forth, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Through Christ, the living water, our living Lord, Amen. Recently, I was reading a blog, a blog post of a pastor who wrote about a time when he had experienced lawlessness. He talks about visiting the African country of Liberia during a time where there was no official government or, and, and what government oversight that they had was being held together by the United Nations. The pastor, the pastor experienced a a nation that was broken, a nation that was harshly divided, and the United Nations was there busy trying to control illegal weapon shipments as well as provide some food and infrastructure instead of working to make sure what the traffic laws were being followed and whether or not they were being enforced. And to that end, there wasn't really any rules for traffic whatsoever. I know it seems like the drivers of Albuquerque, New Mexico can operate their vehicles in crazy manners, can't they? But we all know that there are a certain set of laws and rules that help us understand how to operate a vehicle safely, that govern the proper way to use a motor vehicle on the highway. Courses like driver's education help to teach us those rules and the proper way in how we are to drive. It provides a sense of law sense of order, and it makes, what is that noise, sorry, and makes our streets safer to travel. So rules aren't necessarily a bad thing, are they? You see, each and every one of us, we have a set of rules that we live by in general, things that we probably take as second nature to us. Things like brushing your teeth every morning and every evening. I know I don't leave my house without brushing my teeth. It is one of those rules that our parents probably taught us as little children to make sure that we do this every day. And without that rule, our smile would suffer, wouldn't it? And you might experience the pain of your teeth rotting. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, felt that rules benefited society as well. Now, as the early Methodist class societies were beginning to assemble, 
the lay leaders who were assigned to run these meetings felt that they needed to have a set of guidelines that they should live by. Wesley agreed to this and felt that there needed to be a set of simple rules that people called Methodists should live by. And they are simple, yet they are extremely difficult to live by from time to time. For Wesley, these rules were three. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Or attend upon the ordinances of God. And over the next few weeks, we are going to unpack each one of these rules. Thus, let us look at our first rule, to do no harm. What does harm mean? And how are we to keep from engaging with it? When we look to the definition of, of the word harm, we think about physical injury, material damage, the historical significance of grief or sorrow. And on the theological level, it is synonymous with the word evil, the word wrong, the word ill, wickedness, sin, the opposite of what is good. See, harm, it carries a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of sorrow. It makes sense why Wesley intends his classes and his societies to steer clear of causing harm to each other, both for moral reasons as well as scriptural reasons. It, I don't, is that me or? Okay, well, I'm going to go just straight to the pulpit then. We'll try that instead. In this morning, uh, in our passage, we read the words from the Apostle Paul as he writes to the Roman church. A church built of poor and destitute Jews who lived in the ruling city of the Roman Empire. Through this letter, it is not, uh, this letter is not dated, but it is assumed by the scholars that it was written before the persecution of Christians by the Emperor Nero. However, Paul writes and provides a series of wise words to the people of this Roman church teaching them how to live as well. And I think one of the most powerful verses in this passage comes from the 17th verse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. The apostle, Paul is writing to urge the Christian community to not take their faith as something that is better than the other person, but, but to extend themselves in friendship, mourning with those who are mourning, rejoicing with those who are rejoicing, to celebrate with one another as well as to live alongside one another, even, though, even those they disagree with not to close themselves off fully from their environment, but to make friends, to love people different from them. The Apostle Paul is often teaching a message of being all things to all people, so that people might live out the gospel and live out their faith in such a way that it is contagious for everyone of those who have yet to meet Christ. You see, the Methodists in the 18th century, they, they took this very, very seriously. To live out their faith in such a way that the love of Christ may be contagious to those who have yet to know God. Methodists faced a church and a society where stagnation ran rampant and enthusiastic people were seen to be zealots. 
and, to see, and seem to be dangerous to society. Thus, the, the need for people in these new faith communities to live by a simple set of rules and to look at a way of living was to not do any harm. Like the early Christians, the early Methodists, we too live in a time where harm runs rampant. Following the Second World War, there was this ideal of living into the new age of peace. As so much sacrifice, as so much rationing had taken place during the war to defeat a present evil that had stretched all across Europe and the Pacific. And at the defeat of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan, there was a new er found era of peace that many people felt might last through the ages. Since all people at that time had been subject to the terrors of that war for a second time in just two generations. A new era emerged, a new era focusing on world peace. But sadly, that is not the case as the world in which we live is once again in turmoil by the battles of modern politics. A turmoil that doesn't seem to have an end in sight and a culture where causing harm seems to be our normal. For the Apostle Paul, doing no harm might manifest itself in such a way where a community of Christians were taught to be in community, sharing in both celebration and in heartache. For Wesley and those early Methodists, doing no harm manifested itself in the way that they lived out that rule some 270 years ago by not taking the Lord's name in vain. Drunkenness, fighting, returning evil for evil, giving or taking uh, things on usury. Methodists in the 19th century added the buying and selling of slaves to this list. But how does do no harm, how does that rule translate to you and I this day. And so Wesley saw each one of these rules containing three different parts. The first is of the self. For example, with Wesley, drunkenness, where one might lean on the bottle. The second, with our neighbor, things like returning evil for evil and the buying and selling of slaves. And third, with God. Things like disrespecting God by taking the Lord's name in vain or not honoring your time on the Sabbath. You see, each one of these rules made a huge impact on their own lives as well as all of those they interacted with. So what if we, what if we, both you and I, were to take on these rules <coughs> in a serious manner? How would that look like? What would that look like in our modern age? What if we, you and I, what if we woke up each and every morning and said to ourselves, I will do, not, I will do no harm to myself today. I will not drink or eat unhealthy things. I will not be so busy that I neglect my physical or spiritual well-being. I will not be demeaned today, treated unjustly today, negatively categorized today. What if we woke up and said, I will do no harm to my neighbors today? Where we avoided brawling and fighting with each other where we didn't say hurtful things to each other, where we didn't hide behind the keyboard and share that hurtful post or make that hurtful comment on Facebook. 
where we treat everyone we meet, no matter who they are, with dignity and respect? What if we didn't borrow money that we knew we couldn't pay back? What if we didn't participate in the systems that cause harm to others? And finally, what if we woke up and said, I will do no harm to God today. I will respond to the grace of God to not take his name in vain to honor God on the Sabbath. So what if we picked up this rule to do no harm as one of our own, and when we wake up tomorrow, we take that pledge anew to do no harm? Might we stand out? I, th I think so. Perhaps we might even represent that contagious faith that transforms lives here and now the type of faith that leads us to a complete and transformative witness. And so this morning, like each and every morning, we have been given a new chance to do just that, to do no harm, to do no harm to ourselves, to do no harm to our neighbors, and to do no harm to our God. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to remain seated and sing our song of response, which is One Bread, One Body. Words are going to be on the monitors. Let us remain seated and sing at this time.
be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts we and lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. At the beginning of, your, of, the beginning of time, your spirit moved upon the waters of chaos as you called forth land and sea, mountain and valley, desert and tundra, jungle and grassy plain. Your spirit went before Moses and the Hebrew children, a pillar of cloud by, night, by, by day and a pillar, pillar of fire by night, leading them through the wilderness. Your spirit roused the hearts of the prophets who proclaimed your judgment upon the nations and called for repentance among your people. For these mighty acts of your spirit, we praise your name and we join in the eternal hymn of all the angels and saints who sing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, you anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. By your Spirit, Jesus confronted the demons of oppression. In your Spirit, he rejoiced as his disciples did great work in his name. At his death on the cross, Jesus yielded up his Spirit to you. And by the Holy Spirit, you raised him from the dead. This same enlightening empowering, enlivening spirit Jesus promised to all who keep his commandment to love as he has loved. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of these mighty acts and blessed promises of Jesus, we offer ourselves to you in the union with his offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, gathered here out of love for you and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let the bread in which we break be a true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup in which we share be a true participation in the new covenant by his blood. By your Spirit, manifest in us the power of your redeeming love that we may be for the world Christ, serving in his name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And if you'll join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The table has been set, the feast is ready. 
And so you, ne- you need not be a member of Christ United Methodist Church or United Methodist at all because this table is a table that is open to all. It is a table of God's grace and God's forgiveness. Wesley, in doing no harm, saw this table as a means of grace, a place where one may not know the Lord Jesus before they came to it, but experience God's love and God's transformative love at this feast. So at this time, I want to invite you to come forward by the side aisles. You'll come to the, na- to, to the rails, you'll kneel, and you'll receive uh, communion. Once I dismiss you, return, to the, uh, return by the center aisle back to your seats. Come, the feast is ready. Your place awaits. Please join me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to stand and join me for our closing hymn this morning. which is God be with you till we meet again. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Friends, before I give the benediction, I got one announcement that is, is, is very key here. This Wednesday, we are starting our Wednesday night activities of fellowship. I want to remind you that we are going to have our first night is tacos and trivia night. And it's going to be at 6 o'clock in the fellowship hall. So please come and join. Um, there is still an opportunity to sign up there at the Welcome Center to bring, um, I think, ground beef and probably something else. Um, If it's olives, I don't think you have to worry about that so much because they're gross. Sorry. But but come and join us. There will be olives for you people who like olives uh, on your tacos. I don't understand that, but okay. Um, But come and join us uh, for tacos and trivia, and let's just come and have a good time. Invite your friends, and, and let's just be sure to be in fellowship with each other this summer through, through these Wednesday nights. My friends, will you receive this benediction? 
May the peace of the Lord be with you as you leave this holy place. Carry the grace that you have received in communion and share it with all you need. Go forth in, in love and service to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.